Good evening, uh, Ben Kaufman. Uh, we're in the Kaufman kitchen, and I had started that business in 85. And after I started going through the timeline, I realized how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I started, Matt, my oldest one, was eight years old. And this morning, his daughter, oldest daughter, she's 16, asked if she could borrow my Jeep to go through the graduation train. I said, sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting old. So I, I grew up in Lancaster County and I started, when I got married, we lived in Ohio for seven years. My wife is from out there. So I worked in a cabin shop out there, and cleaning mill. Then the opportunity came to move back here seven years later and work for a uh, the cabinet, the cabinet guy back here, his name is Adam Zimmerman, just a local guy. Two of us used to install cabinets for local contractors, mainly we mainly with E.G. Salsu. I'm sure a lot of you guys know him or heard of him. So we were doing that for about two years. And then Adam had a cabinet shop that he was developing it himself. So he wanted to spend more time there that he asked me if I'd want to take this, this business on just uh, like we were doing was installing cabinets. And I thought, well, that's going to take, be taking a leap. We had three kids and as you always I was the youngest, he was three. So my wife encouraged me to do that. And like you say, behind every good business is a successful, is a behind every successful business is a good woman. And I have a good woman. So we were doing that for about two years. He offered me this business, didn't have to pay anything. I had the contacts that he had worked on and he just gave everything over to me. So I started doing that and we were doing that for, uh, we were doing that at home. I was doing it for 14 years that I worked by myself, just doing cabinets. And then we built the shop, two car garage at home. And I started, what, we, what I would do was install the cabinets and build countertops out on the job. Take full piece of the laminate out and glue everything together. So I developed a system at home that we would spray counters, for spray the laminate, contact, and that was a lot faster, a lot more efficient. We could make the countertops out ahead at time. So we were doing that for, I was in the, in the, right, that, we started that in 1997. And then after five years, we outgrew that shop and moved to another place for six years. And in 2003, we built this shop over next door. This building here wasn't here. We built that shop and we were in there for about 13 years in there. And I had 
both of them, I had two sons and a daughter. They all helped in the business sometime over there. Then after Kyle graduated, graduated from college, he wanted to start a business. And he wanted, to, he was working for me at the time. And I, I wanted him to go out and, and do other work before he would come working full time for us. So he was helping another local contractor sweeping floors and he was only, well, just out of high school. He hated that so bad, so. Then he went to college, and after he came back from that, he wanted he was raring to go start a business. He wanted to buy a business. He wanted to buy my business. Well, I wasn't ready to sell, so we talked about it for a while. And a couple of years, a couple of years went by. He was helping me, and so finally, I, I knew if I didn't sell. He was going to leave and do something on his own and be my competition. I thought, no, we can't do that. So why my wife and I decided that, well, I'm 67 by that time that we'll sell and let him take it over and I'll retire. But I, I stayed on for about two and a half years after that. But yeah, he he just took off. He 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 really done it. I am very proud of what he's doing. He done a good job. And then of course, as soon as he got, we he was he was over in the other building probably four years. And then he decided to build this. And right away, all kinds of flags were going up for me. Uh, man, just take it, you know, slow down a little bit. But he had, he had uh, a tutor that he was that was working with him. Uh, what do you call those? Retired businessman that score score. He was with that. He right away got into that. And then his accountant, he had a good accountant. And man, they really helped him out. So he just kept on going. And when was this put, building built where, where we're talking from right now? Two years. Two years. In July, next month, it'll be two years that he moved in here. And I know when we were talking about moving the club in here, you know, he was saying, we asked him uh, uh, about the time that how long that we could be in here, the club, and he said, "Well, probably five years." Or you know, he 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 had said something about five years. So now he's looking for a place in Westchester to put a design store in and other offices and stuff down there and move some of the people in here down there. And I'm pretty sure he's going to be doing that next year. So if he does that, then I then this it means this place is uh, he's not going to be using this up here. That it's probably I'm I'm thinking you know it'll be probably long term that we could be in here at least you know five eight years or before he would be needing it. So yeah, I was really tickled with what he's doing in here and. Yeah, this building was built in 2020, so he was two years in here and just keeps on going. And he's he's busy. He's yeah, he's really busy. So that's all I want. All I have. I want to give 
great time. You want me to show to this video first? And show that to, yeah. Can I show this first? Yeah. Okay. And don't go away, stay in there. Yeah, this is a, just a little video that Kyle made to, he couldn't be here tonight or he would be here just talking in person, but he, this is Kyle, my son, but he wanted they, just to let us know how he got to letting us in here, what, what he had in. Hi, I'm Kyle Kaufman with Kaufman Kitchens. Uh, the son of Ben Kaufman, one of the members of the club. Uh, the club started meeting here a couple years ago. We built a new building and had some extra space. And we really saw the uh, the impact that the club had on my father. On the after he retired, all the neat stuff that he was making. Uh, my kids really enjoy it, making heirloom down through generations and we really want to see that happen for other people as well and it's been really neat to see uh, people coming and going and creating all kinds of, of really cool things for other people to enjoy it's amazing to see the detail on the work and uh we're just happy to be part of it here to have you share our our building and our space ben thank you very much really appreciate what you guys offer to us it's a great story. It's a great story to hear about handing that down as well. So, And a big thank you to you and your son for the generosity of uh, letting us use this space. It's beautiful. Changing a lot of people's uh, lives and affecting a lot of folks. So thank you. We didn't really move in here as a studio until a year ago. Because yeah. we did, yeah. we voted to buy the equipment okay. in April 21. Yeah, okay, let's get Ray going then we can. You want Ray? You got Ray. Move in with that, yeah. Hey, John, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, a um, little bit of the background. Uh, and you were actually part of this way back in the beginning. So you kind of know what, what took place. Uh, the, the, back in 2008, um, I was a member with a lot of the guys that are in the club of Susquehanna Woodturners. And uh, we were making a trip from Lancaster up to, to uh, Harrisburg, um, going to a meeting, come back. You know, we're spending a couple hours on the road every time, and it just seemed like a real big inconvenience. So I, I had gone up to um, Albany, New York, to Totally Turning when they were having that in Albany itself. That was in 2008. And um, one of the things they had up there uh, uh, that year was dinner, was uh, a dinner, a cruise on the Hudson. And they're going to do a, a presentation by uh, the hat man, uh, Mickelson, was going to do a presentation on, a, on this dinner cruise. And uh, it sounded kind of interesting. So most of the people went, and it was, it was pretty interesting. But um, being from this area and going up to Albany, I didn't know anybody up there, woodturners. So I went to dinner, sat down, and, and it just, it's luck, rolls, rolls the dice sometimes. A guy comes over and he says, uh, hey, he says, anybody sitting here? And I said, no, and he sat down. And we just started talking and couldn't find out. He was a member of a woodturning club that was uh, meeting about an hour from where I grew up in New York. And we got talking and, uh, you know, where are you from? You know, where do you turn? And he says, yeah, we, says, we have an interesting setup. He says, we have a barn and equipment that is provided to the club. Uh, we have a patron. And I said, what do you mean you have a patron? He goes, well, we, this, this guy likes what we do. He's, he's in the art and provides us with the meeting space and the equipment. And uh, what we have to do is just, you know, the usual courtesy thing, keep it clean and take care of it. And wow, that's, that's pretty cool. So I brought that back. It was in the back of my head. I think, it's, well, I'm, you know, back and forth to, to uh, Harrisburg all the time. And Lancaster is known for its, its craft work and its craft people. I, I just didn't understand why we didn't have something here. Well, uh, a, a tree in Lancaster was given to the Susquehanna Club if you wanted the wood. 
So a, a bunch of us went over there and we ended up standing around out by either Race or President Avenue and waiting for that. They had a tree company come in and they're cutting and we're waiting. So I'd gone over and talking to the guys there and I said, you know, I said, why don't you, you they've been here forever. Why don't you guys have a club? So, well, you know, we, we tried, it never worked. So uh, it was about five of us, and I apologize if I get a, the dates wrong or the names, I, I apologize for that for me anymore, it's a long time ago. Um, so I, I thought about it and, I, and I, they just said, well, you know, we don't wanna really get into to, to doing it, but if there's a club, I said, well, I'll tell you what, uh, there was five of us standing there and I said, would, would you guys make a commitment to me that, you know, I'll, I'll go forward on this if you, if we do nothing more than meet in a garage uh, once a month. And all five guys said, yep, yeah, we would do that. So at that point, the idea was alive. So that no matter what happened, we were gonna meet and create something in Lancaster. So that was now, uh, totally turning was in March and this was up like during the summer. So what I did is I started sending out letters and emails using the, the AAW information, uh, people I met, people that referred people to me. Uh, I would get letters. Now this was back, this was early, early email days. Uh, sending hundreds of emails and then if people come back with questions and I would send letters, people go back with this, this took months. And it was, I mean, I estimated probably going up to eight, 900 letters and emails. And uh, everybody was interested, but it was just like, you know, it wasn't running and they weren't sure, even if they had the time. And every time you had to explain this whole thing. So I uh, received a message back from Fox Chapel Publishing where uh, uh, John was, and I didn't, I, I didn't know him at the time. And uh, they said, if you wanna meet, you can meet, we have a meeting space. If you wanna just meet there, you can come in and we'll, we'll offer up our meeting space and you, you can get together and you know see where it leads. So um, I sent information out, started all over again, sent information out and said, we got a meeting space, uh, you know, people come and, and we're gonna talk about it. Well, about 12 people showed up. So uh, showed up some of the Susquehanna guys, some new people, and uh, we went to Fox Chapel. And uh, I asked them, I said, if you give me, just give me an hour. I want to do a presentation for an hour. At the end of the hour, we'll make a decision where the club goes forward. And I passed on this information. And I had a vision, and a vision was that uh, with the talent that was around and around Lancaster, I mean, I mapped this out on the AAW. Uh, with the AEW information of how many wood turners that were registered like with the AEW that were known and there was a lot of other wood turners that weren't known that weren't AEW that we had a nice concentration this was a good place it was a good location uh for other stuff too that the other clubs were doing so we got done done with that and I said okay we're there we took a vote and there was a vote to go forward well what that was again was just another, well, if you do it, we'll do it. So uh, from December, uh, put all the information together, everything we needed to do. And we formed a club in D January of 2009. And uh, at that meeting, we had more people, it had, it had grown, more people heard it was gonna take place. And so we took off. And one of the basic ideas was, was the same thing as they kept saying, well, you know, what are we going to do? We don't have a space. We, we had nothing. We had nowhere to put equipment. Fox Chapel said, you can come in here and use the meeting space, but there's no, no place that well, we can't put equipment in here. You know, there's a business running there. So we said, that's okay. We'll meet. And what our challenge was, was to get a bunch of wood turners together without equipment and do wood turning stuff. And this was, this was a challenge. So what, what I did was I said, well, okay, we did a lot of challenges, uh, a lot of president's challenge, bring in stuff. But the motivation was amazing. Uh, if we had 20 members and we put forth a challenge, the next meeting, 19 uh, challenges would show up on the table. 
So what was happening is, is it, it was working. The, the, the feeling was there. And I, you know, but I kept getting at yeah, what are we going to do? I said, well, there's somebody out there that really is going to believe in us because we're doing it. I mean, you guys are bringing stuff in, everything from the beginner level to you know professional level. We're showing up on that table. Well, for what happened, well, we benefited. Fox Chapel had purchased a uh, warehouse it was across the street from where the the offices were, and they they told me that we could use the space. They had a space upstairs that we could move into and use in a little, little storage closet. And we moved into that. And it, it was an upstairs room in their warehouse where they stored uh, you know, a lot of their books and a lot of their stuff. And for us, it was really a big, big leap forward. It was, we were able to meet there, there was a lathe, uh, and you know, it was a step up. And, you know, we went through their growing pains. Uh, you know, people came, people went, but uh, we kept moving forward. And the thing was, is every time it was like, well, uh, we're not sure, you know, what are we gonna do? It's guys, it's gonna come just, you know, out there somewhere. And everybody was working, everybody was working this stuff. We get people say, well, I think I got somebody and it didn't work out. And I was still contacting people looking for space, come very close a couple of times and it just, just didn't work. So um, we were moved in and we, we spent, uh, and I don't know exactly how long there, a year or two there, and um, that space was no longer available for us. It was time, and we knew that. We knew that going in these spaces without owning it or with a, a lease, and we tried that. We're going around trying to lease spaces and rent places. And we couldn't afford it, you know, little club, and you know, by the time you take the money out for rent or anything like that, it was a little cost prohibitive. And uh, a lot of clubs going to schools. The problem going to school was is the kids were there and the school shut down in the summer. We, we were up against a lot of stuff. So uh, we got the word is that was that uh, we had to leave Fox Chapel. So uh, they were very good to us when we were there. It was time to move on. Luckily, we knew a guy, you know, sometimes you know a guy. We knew a guy who's the most, one of the most generous wood turners that we have in Lancaster County. I love this guy, he's, he's been great to us, it was Bob Gocknauer. And Bob says, you know, I got a, I got a space and he allowed us, you know, if you don't know Bob Gocknauer, like, like us older guys know Bob Gocknauer, he had a shop he turned in every day. He was, he turned every day, he sold stuff. Uh, I mean, this is a guy that turned more than any of us. He offered that space up to us and we went in and uh, we were allowed to have presenters. He offered his lathe, he offered his equipment. You can't get any more generous than that. But we also knew that what was gonna happen is this was gonna get old. And um, so people were on the look for, you know, what's, what's the next thing? So uh, a couple of the guys had found uh, the timing, I guess, it, timing worked out. They had found that Thaddeus Stevens had purchased the old community hospital uh, up uh, in outside, just out on Orange Street, outside of Lancaster. And um, they'd made a contact there and found out that we, were, we would be able to go in and use one of their technical areas uh, in there and um, they had a classroom and a work area. And this was real, this is like a real professional setup. And we moved up there, up there and we had a pretty good relationship with them. We had our meetings there, we shared a lathe, we shared tools and we were up there a couple of years. And, but it, it's the same thing. It's, it's always looming, it's always hanging over your head that we're, that one, we're one step away from Something changed, and, and it did. What happened is we got the word that uh, you know we had to leave, and it, you know it happens. It's we're, we were guests, and uh, you know, like they say, get guests and fish in three days. So we we kind of it was time, but the good thing was is we had gone through this. So we moved the stuff out, and what do we do? Well, a couple of the guys that lived in the uh, have the, the retirement communities have meeting places. And we said, well, we used to do it before. Let, let's just meet. We'll do that. Let's keep the club alive. And we met, we went to garden spot and, and you know, a couple spots we met in. 
And while we did that, um, it came up, well, maybe we ought to check with um, the craft guild. So uh, we, we got a space in the craft guild and it worked, but it was down in the city and parking, I, I think somebody's car got towed, car got towed one time or something. And, and uh, so uh, it, it was tough. Uh, it, it worked, but again, we were looking and while all this was happening, COVID come along. So now everybody, uh, wherever you were, everything was shutting down. And so, but one of the things was is the spirit was still there and um, Zoom come along, people were getting into Zoom. Uh, John, Kelsey, uh, and you all know John because you do the coffee time. You know, we said we've got a super thing. It's known worldwide now doing a coffee time. Zoom started out as what button do I push and whatever and grown to what we have today. And so we, we met on Zoom, the club stayed alive. And uh, while that happened and the word came is, you know, there's a space that's offered. Uh, you know, ben, ben had been a member of the club and a space is offered. And so what had happened, what I think is a miracle since uh, that meeting I had by chance with somebody in 2008, somebody was saying, you guys are okay guys and we got a space that you can use. So uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And uh, Ben was just talking about, you know, there's a possibility looking down the road that this might be a, a few year thing. So uh, we've survived, we continue to survive. And every time we pull ourselves up and, uh, you know, one more step up, I cannot give thanks enough to uh, Ben and Kyle. And, and this is the, the greatest thing. This is the, a vision that I look back that I personally thought was something that could happen, but it only happened because everybody in the club presents such an image and does so well that when people deal with us, they're dealing with some great guys. So, uh, you know, I say, thank you. Thank you, Ben. And John, I give it back to you. Okay, back to you then, Matt. Take the spotlight off you, Ray. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'd like to say uh, a few things. Uh, uh, I have said this many times before, uh, Ray did a super job of uh, getting this thing started and sticking with it, and uh, it's developed into really a fantastic uh, uh, meeting and organization, and I have nothing but gratitude for all of you people that have done so much to make this thing work, starting with Ray. Thank you very much. Here, here. Do you have any other questions for Ben or Ray? You know, I, I appreciate the history of this. And I have to say to Mr. Gocknauer, who is also online here, thank you so much. Because it was uh, amazing for him to give us his shop, which is the time that I started here with the club and met these amazing people that helped me so much in my journey, enjoying what we do here. So, Bob, thank you. I know you're out there. And it's truly great to see how much we've grown as a club and continue to grow, even as we move spaces and change locations. I think we have 84, 85 members now. That's great. And with the coffee hours, we have uh, members all over the world, really. <laughs> Everyone should come to Lancaster and enjoy what we have here. I mean, these people all over the place, come on, come in. You can stay here. You can stay at all of our homes. Come on, take the trip. <laughs> you can stay at Mike's right, house. Mike. Yeah, you can all stay at Mike's house. <laughs> yeah, come stay at Doug's house. He lives two doors yeah, right. down next to the right. <laughs> so, I, no, well, I between Doug's and mine, we could easily house 14 people. So come on. Well, I'm not so sure about 14, but maybe we'll say 13 anyway. 13, 13. <laughs> works, uh. Hey, Ray, thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah. that history. That was re really good. and. Thank and ben, you. ben, thank you so much for your history. I know Ben's not, he, he's a humble guy and he honestly has 
such a success story on what he's done with his own business. I'm so envious of him because I was a corporate guy. I was a, you know, I tied my tie every morning and I, I literally worked on Wall Street for years and I would have killed to replace that for what Ben did in working with his hands and doing, and doing stuff that people to this day enjoy. So thank you to all of you guys. Appreciate that. One of the things, one of the things I'd like to say as well is that I've seen a lot of clubs that have sort of fizzled because um, the old timers with the vision or those of us who started off eventually got tired and it's really appreciated that people like yourself, Matt, and others have stepped up and into the roles, even though you haven't been for the club, whatever, that have picked up the vision and continued to run with it. That's what makes me feel confident that this club is going to keep on going for, for a few years yet. Good night, Thank everyone. you. Thank you. <laughs>